Section 3.2, work with exponents. Very large numbers can be awkward to write. Sometimes they are easier to work with when written in exponential form. For example, the intensity of an earthquake, the population of Earth, it's a big number, right? And the distance from the Earth to the moon, which is also a really big number. And the, these can be better expressed using exponents. So mathematicians and scientists like to take large numbers and they can write them in exponential form, which is a much more uh, short way of doing it. So as a small example, we can start with the number of 8, and I can show you that 8 uh, can be written as 2 raised to the exponent 3. Now just to understand what you're seeing here, is, uh, this is uh, 2 raised to an exponent. We write that as a smaller number toward the top called a superscript. Okay, And 2 is what we call the base of this uh, power, Okay, and 3 is the exponent. And the entire thing is called a power. Now, sometimes in everyday language, we uh, like to say uh, two raised to the power of three. Okay, I'll say that sometimes, and many times I'll also say two raised to the exponent three. Okay, but just these are the terminology. These are the words uh, that we use to describe what you're seeing. Okay. Now, so why can we write eight this way? Well, eight. If we broke it down, we can break it down into uh, two times two times two. Right, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8. And so 3 of these 2s, I can say this as uh, 2, this is my base, the number that we're multiplying. And how many times we're multiplying it? 3, exponent. Okay, so 2 to the exponent 3. Okay, so the idea is how do we express this long chain of numbers that are being multiplied as a single exponent, as a single power? Okay, so here I have 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. How many fives are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can express this as five raised to the exponent six. Okay, looking at my next example, I have negative three being multiplied. How many times, how many negative threes do I have here? So I have one, two, three, and four, I have four of them. So I can express this as negative three raised to the exponent four. Now don't forget to put your brackets, it's very important. And I'll explain why uh, in a couple of examples from now. Uh, h times h times h, well, uh, not only can you do this with numbers, you can also do it with variables. So if I have uh, h three times here being multiplied, I can express this as h raised to the exponent three. Okay. All right, so let's go down to my second example. Write each in expanded form and evaluate. So going in reverse, I can take my exponent, my power, two to the exponent four, and write that in expanded form by saying 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, So I have four 2's written here because my exponent is 4. You can do the same thing with fractions. So if I have negative 3 over 4 and brackets squared, I can expand this by saying negative 3 over 4 in brackets times another negative 3 over 4. Okay, there are two of them here because the exponent is two. Okay. Now here, let's get into this case of the negative in the brackets. Okay, so if I have negative three to the exponent four, we already know that it's going to be negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three. Okay, and if I'm writing uh, brackets beside each other, I don't need to put the multiplication sign. The brackets means that each of these are being multiplied. Okay, and Let's just multiply them, right? So negative three times negative three together, these two make a nine, right? Positive nine, two negatives make a positive. And these two will also make nine. Okay, and don't forget, we're still multiplying everything here, so there's a multiplication sign in between. And nine times nine is 81. Okay, so I have a positive result. However, what if I don't have brackets? What does it mean when I don't have brackets? What it means is it's as if I'm taking a negative 1, for example, then multiplying it with 3 to the power of 4. And that's what it means. Okay? So the exponent only operates, okay, like, like use that word operates, it only operates on the base it's attached to. So it's attached to the 3. Okay? Whereas in the previous example, the exponent was attached, or it operates on the, this entire bracket, negative 3. Okay? So it's only attached to this 3 here. 
then I can only apply it to the three, and then I multiply it by the negative one afterwards, like, you know, bed mass rules, right? So exponents first before you multiply that negative. So I'm going to do it this way. So negative, and I'm going to have three times three times three times three. Okay, there's four threes because the exponent is four. All right? And we already know three times three times three times three, that's 81. And then I bring down the negative sign, so negative 81. Okay, so it's a different, there's a different answer depending on whether your negative is part of the base, uh, which is what I have here. So if it's part of the base, I get this answer, 81. If it's not, it's outside, and I get this answer, negative 81. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with uh, powers with a negative base in brackets or without brackets. So example number three, substitute the values into each expression, then evaluate the expression. So we can take any expression such as 5a squared and replace a with a number. So I'm going to replace a with 3. Now before I make that replacement, I'm just going to put a bracket there and I'm going to put the 3 inside. Okay, so it's, usual, it's useful and less confusing if you put brackets. And the reason why is, is when I read this, all I have to do is follow my bed mass rules. Okay, so my bed mass says I have to evaluate uh, the brackets with this exponent first before I multiply it with the 5 in front. Okay, so here uh, 5 times 3 squared, so 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to put 9 down first. And then I'm going to do 5 times 9, which is 45. So if any, any, any of you are wondering, why is there no multiplication sign? Because it's understood to be multiplication if you have a number, a coefficient in front of your variable or in front of another bracket like this. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. x squared minus x minus 10. I'm going to make a replacement. I'm going to substitute x equals negative 2. So here I'm going to create um, brackets where I have the variable. So instead of x, I'm going to write down a bracket, and inside that bracket I'm going to put my replacement, negative 2. Don't forget, it's being squared. And I have a minus sign. x, I'm going to put a bracket. I'm going to place a minus 2 in there. And then I have minus 10. Okay? So the brackets make it so that it's easy for us to see and not get confused that I have here negative 2 squared. So I'm going to take the negative 2 and include the negative as part of my calculation. And there's a double negative here, minus and minus 2. Okay, so negative 2 squared, this is negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. Minus negative 2 is positive 2, so plus 2, and then minus 10. And then when I simplify this, 4 plus 2 equals 6, minus 10 is negative 4. Okay, example number 4, let's do a word problem. So ap applying exponents to solve problems. So here I have a, a type of bacteria that can cause a dangerous health problem. Okay, it doubles every 60 minutes. So this population doubles. The initial population, the starting population, is the uh, is a number 200. So it starts off with 200 bacteria. So maybe you're studying a petri dish or something, uh, and we have 200 bacteria. Okay, so in the beginning, after one hour, 60 minutes, it doubles to 400. So after another hour, this population of 400 is going to double again. It's going to become 800. Okay, how do I go from 200 to 400? All you're doing is multiplying by 2. So times 2, from 400 to 800, you multiply by 2. That's what it means by doubling. Okay, 800 doubles. So again, 800 times 2 gives me 1,600. And then 1,600 times 2 is 3,200. Okay. So if you don't like minutes, you can replace them with hours. So one hour, zero, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. So after four hours, I have 3,200 bacteria. All right. So let's construct the graph of the population versus time. Use a smooth curve to connect the points. Describe the shape of the graph. Here I have a grid. Already pre-filled it. So again, when you're drawing a graph, population versus time, you always have to include your title. So label your x and y axis. So then my x axis I have minutes. And my y axis I'll have the population. Okay, you notice the scale is even. Every four squares is going to be 60 minutes. So here's one hour, 
2 hours, 120 minutes, 3 hours, 180 minutes, and 4 hours, 240 minutes. Same thing for the scale on my left. Every square is 200, so I skipped count by 200, 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. Then I didn't write down every other, every number here, but you know, if you continue, you'd have 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, 2,000, and then 2,200, 2,400, 2,600, 2,800, 3,000. Okay. I'm going to plot my points. So the first point here is 0 and 200, so I'm going to put a big point right there. And I have 60 and 400, another point right there. And then I have 120 and 800, so another point right there. So it's gradually starting to increase. And then after after 180 minutes, I have 1,600, so I'm going to be right there. And then after 240 minutes, I'm at 3,200. I'm all the way up here. So you can see this is starting to rapidly grow. The population grows, what we say, exponentially. It grows exponentially. So the curve of my graph would look something like this. Okay, and if it keeps going, just draw an arrow to show it keeps going. So it's growing exponentially. So what will the population be after 12 hours and after one day? So I would challenge you, pause the video for a moment and see if you can maybe continue this table and figure out how many, uh, what is the population of this bacteria after 12 hours and after one day. Okay, so hopefully you figured it out. I'll show you in, in a shortcut um, how you can figure this out. Okay, so if you're doubling a population, multiplying it by two. Okay. So if you're multiplying it by two, how many times are you multiplying it by two? Well, if it's 12 hours, there's going to be 12 of these twos. Okay, I'm not going to write down all 12 because we now have an exponential form. Okay, it's 12 times. So exponential formula says says I can just say two raised to the exponent 12. Okay, and if I multiply this with our initial population, what was our initial population? 200. I'll get my answer. So after 12 hours my population will be a really big number. Hopefully you got this too. 819,200. After one day? Hmm, okay, how many hours are in a day? Well, there are 24 hours. Okay, so I'm gonna take my doubling factor, two, and my exponent will be 24. And if my starting population was 200, I'm gonna multiply this by 200. Okay. So here, my after one day, can you imagine how big that population is going to be? Hopefully you calculated it. Uh, here's the answer. 3 billion, 355 million, 200. And that's it.